Uh, okay, so everyone hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, okay, that's good. Well, th th this is a very rare picture. I I'm never ever on the wrong side of the camera. Uh, I never like getting my picture taken, but you asked me for a picture, so um, th 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 this is me. I was actually just getting a studio ready for uh, a musician shoot, and I was actually modeling for that. Uh, so my two vices are guitars and cameras. So uh, th th this is one of my favorites here. So I hadn't shaved for a week to try and get a bit texture to, to look like a, a haggard musician. But um, uh, as it was said in, in the bio, I'm very new to stereo photography. I understand how cameras work and I've done photography for a while. And th this picture here with the flowers, th this was, I think, one of my first stereos that, that I took. I just pulled a few flowers out of the garden and arranged them and uh, I just took one picture and slid it across 30 millimeters and took another one and uh, and managed to line it up on uh, uh, a kind of Photoshop app. And this what this is what really got me hooked. You know, I, the first first stereo I saw was at Christmas time last year, uh, where, where a Texan who married a Scottish woman uh, w w was showing me some of his stereos after I was showing him some of my. Um, Milky Way shots from the Scottish Highlands, and I was hooked after that. So um, I, I've just kind of went, went on and, and tried a, a few different things. Um, th this is a street shot uh, in in Edinburgh, and this I have two different setups for for photographing people in the street. This one's actually just taken from the camera strap. The camera's hanging around my neck. And uh, I've actually Wi-Fi linked this to my phone, so I can actually have a monitor screen, and I have a a, a Wi-Fi set up on the phone, and the transmitters in my pocket, so no one is aware that they're actually getting their their picture taken, uh, and and I feel you get a much more natural look here. Um, again, th this one's actually set up on a continuous focus. Uh, as you can see, the background is is a little blurred. The the depth of field is a little uh, shallower on this than a lot of the other pictures. It was taken with a 55 millimeter lens on a Sony 6400s, which is a, a one and a half times crop. Um, so um, I, I couldn't get the, the, the full depth and focus, but I still um, enjoyed the, the image on this. Th this one's a little bit different. And uh, if you actually see the monument in, in, in the background there, that's the Scots Monument. And it was actually strange because um, uh, Andrew Lauren has a picture of this through one of the, the closes, one of the venals from uh, higher up in, in, in the houses that you can see in the distance. Uh, this is different. This is, um, I've kind of set a hyperfocal length on this, whereby the, the depth of field is, is just set through the aperture so that I know that everything within uh, a metre and a half of the camera to infinity is actually going to be in focus. So I don't have to worry about getting images in focus. I know that everything's going to be there. I'm shooting into the sun here, which was a little bit of an issue, but I, I still like the, the, the image uh, on this as well. And another one, strong fish eye. I left the curvature in this because I felt it kind of added something to the, the, the mystique of, of the image. Again, I'm very, very close to this person. It's a, an 8 millimeter lens on, on a 1.5 crop. So that's 12 millimeters and, and 35 mil standards. Uh, and again, I, I've got a different style here. I've got the two cameras mounted on a an Arca Swiss plate with a handle on it. And I'm just walking past and I'm just passing the, the front of your bike, and I'm just snapping the picture. I'm so close that no one really imagines that the pictures are, are actually being taken here. Uh, it's a, a very satisfying way of, of getting close-up pictures and being able to use the, the functionality of the fisheye lens. This one, again, very, very simple. She was just walking right in front of me, and I tried to you'll get as much, and, and try, I try and get clean sides, clean uh, images around the side. Unfortunately, the building's uh, cutting in on the right-hand side a little bit, 
but it, it wasn't again it wasn't too bad and we've got the mask showing the sign of the times and empty streets this is a, the capital of scotland empty streets through lockdown these are normally packed uh, and again it's just no public transport and nothing's really happening much at all on, on this particular day if anyone has any questions, by by all means, just just ask. Uh, so this is a fish eye again, very close, and again, not needing to worry about the focus on that uh, on a on an eight millimeter on that camera, on f11 or f8. In actual fact, in this case, everything from 0 0.2 meters to infinity uh, is in focus. So I, I I don't need to worry about uh, images being sharp. I just need to worry about making sure that my shutter speed's fast enough because I'm so close to the, the, the people that I'm photographing. Uh, and again, similar spot to before, different day this time, slightly busier. Uh, we're, we're getting a bit lockdown relaxed, but we still have the mask. And again, got the, the main person in, in here, bus in the background, and we've got quite a bit of depth all, all the way back. Again, it's, it's done through hyperfocal. Uh, the, the lenses are, are set um, uh, prior to even going out. And this way, the only thing I really need to worry about is the light changing and I have the ISO on automatic to try and take care of uh, in, any changes in the light. I do like black and white. Uh, and, and again, I, I like to, the character just walking along with the dog. Uh, and, and we're looking right along, right to the very end of Princess Street and up into Carlton Hill, where you can see uh, part of what looks like the Greek Parthenon, uh, which is called Edinburgh, is this grace because somebody started building it and ran out of money. Uh, so it was never finished. So we only have one side of, of that up on the, the hill, which is a great viewpoint for, for photo photographing along uh, Princess Street in Edinburgh. Again, I was just walking along, just snapping away. I think I took about 400 pictures that day uh, on each of the cameras. So I, it was quite a busy day. So I'm still working through some, some of the images that I uh, took that day. I did have a bit of work to do on that one. O on the bus shelter, there's an electronic screen. And for some reason, that didn't work particularly well on both images. Uh, and it caused a bit of uh, irrit eye irritation. So I was able just to clone one across into the other. And it, it's kind of worked seamlessly, uh, I think. Again, uh, another one. This is just outside the railway station. Uh, looking right along, I quite like the the girl just sitting there and the the tree, the colours, nice strong sky. Uh, again, it's a fish eye. I'm probably only about maybe six six feet away from her, maybe maybe slightly more than that, but probably not much. Uh, and, and just taking a shot right along the the street. We've got Edinburgh Castle up on the left of the tree, uh, although we don't see much of the view uh, from from here because uh, it is just uh, quite a bit away. Another one, just somebody crossing the street. I try to keep the third rule where possible. Yeah, you know, I, I think composition is, is quite an important thing. Uh, it doesn't always work, but I think if you go in thirds, it's a good place to start to try and keep a, a degree of composition and interest uh, and just make it more appealing uh, to the eye. And again, I've got her walking into the picture, which is... Uh, uh, a plus for me. I, I tend to enjoy that rather than someone walking out of, of the picture. And again, I like this. Uh, it was probably the closest to what I would say for, for myself would be a decent um, a street, fo street photograph rather than just pictures of people in the street. Uh, you, you know, the, the curvature of the building at the side, again, that is just caused by the fisheye lens. And I've got this woman just walking right into it, and I've just kind of caught her the way that I would have liked. Maybe half a step forward would have been maybe just perfect, but I was really happy with this. Uh, and again, I had to clone the actual highlight that sparkles uh, at about three quarters of, uh, of way up the arch, uh, just to make the two images the same. Other than that, there's nothing really else I've done to this. Hey, Graham. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, I know that you you said you're open to taking questions along the way, and I just um, saw a question in the chat. Could you clarify what kind of Sony? I think there was a question, Sony 6400, 6500? Uh, 6400s. Okay. 
And was that with the remote uh, trigger, you said? Yes, it is. It's a ProPixel is the remote that I'm using. I'm using one receiver with a splitter to the two cameras. So there's only one signal, and that triggers both cameras. And okay. It, it works very well. I, I, I can do a burst of 10 pictures, and on average, out of the 10 pictures, 10 frames a second, uh, there will only be one that's out of sync. So that that's more than acceptable uh, for, for for what I'm looking for. Okay. And I see another question about what focal length are you using? Uh, this this one, well, if we go back to everything relates back to a 35 millimeter camera, this would be a 12 millimeter on a full frame camera, but it's actually an eight millimeter on the Sony's. But that's okay. equivalent to 12. Thank you. And just moving into the countryside now, uh, I actually had a different picture on here, uh, but found out it didn't actually work particularly well as, as larger images because it had a lot of uh, fluorescent colours in it and bright reds, and they were kind of clashing a little bit. I'll maybe take a bit of advice from someone on that because I don't actually know much about stereo photography itself. I know how to use cameras and put them side by side uh, and, and some basic alignment, but I, I don't actually know much about uh, stereo photography itself. I'm very much a, a learner on, on, on this. But I, I came across this, I, I found this purely by accident and thought, you know, there'll be such depth on that. So I just, I took this picture and I just added uh, a little bit uh, detail to the sky and, and added some structure to the sky to give it a bit extra lift. Uh, and um, I did like this. It was one, one an early one as well, uh, just, just showing the depth of 3D. And we call this a dragon's tail, uh, just because it looks like a, a sleeping dragon at, at, at the coast. And we have lots of rock structures like this around the, the, the Scottish coast. One of the big advantages of uh, living in a smaller country is we are only uh, like 40 minutes from the coast either side. So it's, we, we can get to the coastland and out to the countryside very, very easily. So I, again, I, I saw this and I thought that should look quite good. And again, I was quite satisfied with the uh, re result of this. And this is the same village. It's a, a fishing village uh, called St. Monin's. I, I go up here for a break every year. A uh, lovely, nice, slow pace of life. Uh, uh, and again, I just enjoy that. Uh, it's, it's a nice break from the um, city life of, of the norm as such. One thing I didn't like about this was uh, when I, I lined everything up, I lost a little bit on the bottom. So the, the actual anchor at the bottom there is just a little too tight to the frame. But other than that, I, I really enjoyed uh, the, the outcome of this. Uh, this is close to me. This is about 15 minutes walk from my house. A uh, beautiful place and uh, it, it's great. It's uh, go down there early morning and it's a lovely flowing waterfall. There's always water in it. I uh, got to tidy up lots of Coca-Cola and beer tins and crisp packets and things. But, you know, after maybe 10, 20 minutes tidying up, then, you know, you, you can end up with, with a beautiful place to take pictures. My friend calls it Narnia. He says it looks like something out the line, the witch in the wardrobe or, or how he would imagine Narnia to be. Oops, sorry, it jumped to there. This one's, I, I like waterfalls and, and long exposures. Well, one of the things I should say with long exposures is um, it lets too much light into the camera. So we have to use filters in, in front of the lenses. So I'm, I'm using what's called neutral density filters. Now, the, these ones are really dark. The, these give you an extra 10 stops. So it's, it's like looking at really dark sunglasses um, or, or two pairs of really dark sunglasses to allow it to, to expose it for maybe 30 seconds, sometimes a minute, uh, to, to get the nice flowing uh, falls uh, and just, just to get that, that effect. I think this one was about 15 seconds or so I, I, I took on this one. So I'm assuming if you're using uh, ND10s, uh, you must be on tripod. Is that oh, yeah, correct? Yes. 
I mean, that, that's one of the things for this type of a uh, picture is, you know, a quality tripod. Uh, right. I, I crimp and save on that. My, my tripod is one of my most, other than my really good lenses, well, it was probably my most ex expensive purchase. I, you, you know, sometimes I'm in quite heavy streams as well and uneven ground. And, you know, you want something that's solid, especially if you've got like a couple of full frame cameras on it. Uh, so, um, you, you know, yeah, definitely a, a quality tripod is a good thing for it. And a good ball head as well uh, to take the weight of the cameras and the lenses. Uh, this is another one, a different view from the, the same waterfall the first one I showed you. But this time it's a bit cha changed it a little bit and just used the stones as a lead in into the, into the picture. Uh, and again, I like this because the, the water looks deep. It almost looks like it's uh, ice and you're looking through the ice just the, with, with the stereo effect on, on that. This is a different waterfall. Uh, again, all done with uh, neutral density filters and polarizers as well, I should say. Uh, one of the things I would point out when you're using two cameras with uh, rotating polarizers as you have to rotate them so that both images look the same. And so you've got the same level of polarization on both images. Uh, had when four and a six three hundred was the, the the polarizer was causing a heavy blue tint on one of the one of the sensors. And so that that was a, a five minute warning that I've got there. So um, just to make sure that, you know, your pictures look exactly the same. So that, I, I caught my first trout here when I was five years old. I th this was close to where I, I used to live. And Hey, Graham. I, yes? Uh, uh, there's another question in the chat. How do you stop the wind? Well, it, it, one of the things is go on still days. If there's foliage, and um, wh where we are here, I have a very solid tripod here. This was actually a windy day. This was a very windy day, um, but everything's on the rock. The the seaweed was kind of anchored down quite a bit. It was sheltered from from the wind. There's a big rock face to my left hand side shielding me, uh, but yeah, uh, and when you're in amongst foliage, that that's one of the things you do need to be careful with, especially with long exposures, uh, because it does mess up your picture quite a bit. So th this one here is the, the Bass Rock on the east coast of Scotland. It has the largest granite population in the world. So that will give you some indication of why the rock is white. And the, again, the sea is completely flat here. This is about 30 seconds, possibly even a minute, because uh, it was quite windy and quite wavy as well. And um, so that, that gave us uh, a nice flat sea. Uh, unfortunately, this time I had actually forgotten something and couldn't use um, the, the the tripod. I can't remember if it was a tripod I forgot. So the, these ones were just handheld. Uh, and I, again, the, the, getting close to sunset, it's a private beach. I was here all day. It was absolutely lovely. Uh, I, I'll run through these because um, they're very similar, just different kind of looks to these, because uh, I'm quite conscious of time uh, as well. And somebody had made this sand octopus. Uh, and as you can see, it's a very, very quiet, it's a private beach. It costs you something like $4 to go there for the day. And quite often, you never see another person. And somebody had created this, and I thought it, it was quite nice just to bring that in and uh, along with the rock in, in the background. Uh, this is on the west coast of Scotland, a uh, lighthouse, uh, the clock lighthouse. And uh, again, nice leading line right along the coast, taking you right round into the picture. And this is right opposite where the American naval base used to be at Holy Loch, where their submarine base was in Scotland, but they left there in 1992. And again, another look. We're now getting into a uh, very evening. I was on my way uh, to uh, actually a, a star shoot, a night shoot uh, further down uh, in the borders here. And is there any um, Outlander fans watching? This is uh, the, the castle 
which was supposedly Inverness, where I'm a fan. <laughs> all his lashes. Uh, so uh, it's actually Blackness Castle. So again, I live right in the middle of Outlander uh, photography land. So I, I may do a, a 3D shoot with, with that. So I was out for a walk and I came down this way and just saw it, it was a, a good way to bring the the wall and, and lead that right into the depth of the castle. Uh, this is a model shoot. Uh, my friend's a professional photographer. Uh, he invited me along and I thought, well, we'll maybe give, give this a try and see, see how this works out then. And this is my friend Dave. He's a professional photographer. Uh, models love him, so he gets models to work for free. And he invited me along. Dave was really interested in the 3D setup. And um, he went home and then he sent me this. Uh, so this is Dave's first 3D picture. Uh, he just put, pulled this out and took this with his D DSLR uh, and, and sent it to me, which I thought was excellent um, for for just uh, not knowing much about it and just taking two pictures and putting them together. I love Astro, and this is my very first Astro picture. I was very new at stereo when I did this, uh, and there was a lot of luck involved with, with this picture. Uh, as you can see by the reflections uh, in the water, it, it was like a mill pond. Co it was completely flat, and it's difficult to see where the reeds end and where the reflections begin. Uh, the Milky Way was a little bit too far to the right. Uh, however, I wasn't really complaining. I was absolutely delighted uh, with this picture, with only um, just starting off doing uh, stereo. This was a... This is up in Loch Lomond, uh, top reach, the high reaches of Loch Lomond. The, the loch is completely flooded over, uh, and uh, we've got the Milky Way in the background. This, the, this, this walkway is at the back of a, a very old like, house. It, it's, unfortunately, it's all blocked off now. We, we, we can't use that anymore. But I just use this as a, as a great lead-in uh, with the, the Milky Way in, in the background. Um, these types of pictures are very difficult to take. They're very difficult to process because it never looks like this. You're dependent on Lightroom to actually bring the, the, the picture out and just use the camera to collect the data rather than take, take pictures as such. And then when we get to this one, this one's actually taken at the end of that walkway, uh, looking left. We can actually see how much water is actually in the lock because it's even covered the, the boardwalk there as well. Uh, and again, we're, we're looking north here. The, this picture was taken earlier uh, in, in the day, as just before the Milky Way was passing over into the, the, the eastern sky. Uh, these, these, these pictures are actually sequential. Uh, I didn't have two um, full-frame cameras and... 14 mil lenses uh, to, to put together, but I can do that now. Uh, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to the next clear uh, new moon uh, to, to get out again. And something a little bit different, I'm just, just finishing up now. This is my son. And the only reason I put this in was I actually managed to get both cameras synced up to a studio flash. It took me almost all morning trying different, uh, all different light setups and, and things. And I actually put this on Facebook and somebody challenged me and says, no, you, you wouldn't have done that. You're just using constant light. But th these are actually two Ellen Chrome flash heads uh, that I got connected up together and, and they work perfectly. So that's also given me a, a new angle to, to try uh, something uh, different um, m moving forward. And that's pretty much me at, at the minute. That's where I actually show my pictures about. I've got a few in Instagram accounts, and obviously Stereo Pics is the one that is the uh, predominant one for tonight. And that's pretty much me. If, if anybody wants to ask any other questions, I'll stop sharing my screen. If I can get back to this. Stop presenting. There we go. 
Thank you. That was um, amazing, Graham. <laughs> and I'm sure if you scroll through the chat, you'll you'll see a consensus there. Uh, All right. Okay. <laughs> everyone thinks their work is just studying, but uh, yes, please ask questions, people. We, we've got like another uh, five to six minutes to um, ask questions and discuss Graham's work before we move on to David. So if you've got questions or thoughts, please share. Uh, I have a question. Okay. On your uh, last page of the presentation, you had some addresses at and a site. What precedes the at sign? No, the, the at sign is Instagram. Oh, okay. I'm not an Instagram user, so thank you. All right. No, uh -huh. most of the work uh, is on the site. Okay, so it's citystreetpicks.co.uk. Very good. Thank you. I had a question I was wondering about, Graham. Has anyone, um, while you were taking street photos of them, has anyone caught you taking pictures of them? Uh, Kita, that, that is a very, very good question. Uh, I, I try to remain invisible, and I have taken literally hundreds of thousands of pictures through, through the time uh, with, with just a straight camera, and I've been caught twice, okay? Uh, and once went really bad. I was in London and uh, a place called Camden Camden Market, which is a very common place for photographers. And this Australian guy, because when I do a lot of street photography, I do it differently. I use a fisheye lens, but I crouch down and put the camera on the ground and photograph people from the ground up. If, if you have a look at my website, you'll understand what, what I'm doing there. And it makes people look like giants, you know? So I did this, and this guy went crazy. Went and he got right in my face and said I was illegal, and he sent for security, and I got taken away with security. And the, the strange thing was, was he demanded I deleted the picture, and I, I didn't have a problem with that. And then when I got it up on the on the camera, and he saw it, he liked it. I knew by his face that he liked it, but he was already raging by that point. That um, so and it was it was embarrassing because it was a new camera. And I couldn't find out how to delete it as well. And I got taken away with security and I had a chat with them. And they, they just told me, yeah, just go on, do what you're doing, but just be, be mindful, you know? So that's the worst, that's the only bad experience I've had. That's a great story. <laughs> as a side note on that one, I'm not sure if this works with Sony, it does with, with Canon. If you erase your memory card and then don't take another picture on it, you can just go home and recover the data on it. So if you're ever in a situation where some cops or, or security or whatever make you uh, wipe your camera, you can get the pictures back and any problem. Uh, all right, okay, <laughs> that, that's good to know. Uh, yeah, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't happen too often. I mean, I've had so many positive experiences with that where just photographing people candidly uh, and I'll maybe put hashtag Camden Market because I do a lot of photography in London because I work in London regularly. And quite often somebody will add you on Instagram and it's, it's, it's the picture you've taken that they have as a profile picture. Um, and, and they like it. And I've had lots of positive things and lots of really funny stories about, about taking pictures of people and, and how that, that's actually transpired. And everything's happened w without me even knowing about it. And then I, the story gets back to me weeks later. Oh, I see David Kuntz there. Hi, David. Um, yeah, it's... Um, Let's start. <laughs> I, I'm surprised that uh, yeah. you, you, that nobody notices because I found with a, with a normal camera, nobody ever really notices. But when you've got a twin camera rig, you know, people are stopping you all the time saying, why the two cameras? And, uh, you know, yeah. it's hard to be uh, uh, unobtrusive. I mean, that's one advantage why I like using the uh, the Fuji camera because it, it doesn't look like anything different and it's compact and easy to carry, but we can't get the kind of results that you're getting. <laughs> uh, well, that, that's the thing. When, when you've got a camera where you can change the lenses and you can add filters on, it, it opens up a whole new range of, of creativity. Uh, and you know, <laughs> I, I was fortunate that I knew 
quite a bit about photography before moving into the stereo photography because all I'm really doing is what I would do with a single camera with two cameras and the only thing is is I'm just really worrying about have I got enough bass to, to, to get the depth that I want you know everything else is pretty much the same when it comes to the landscape stuff close-ups a bit different you know I've, I've learned a lot where you know you take a picture of someone who's relatively close but the background is far away it's uneasy on the eyes and, and it's not clean to look at so I'm still very much learning uh, about this kind of thing so uh, but re really really enjoying it I never wanted to take another flat picture again once it started <laughs> Well, you seem to have really figured out, you know, for someone who says you don't know that much about stereo, your alignment, uh, the way the pictures are both composed and your framing and stereo windowing uh, looks spot on. Are you using Stereo Photo Maker? Or I'm actually using the, the Apple version on the phone. Most of that's done through i3D Steroid. So 3D, uh, well, all right, that's same same guy uh, made the software, so yes. Yeah. Um, so that, that's what I've been using. It's actually strange, David, because I, I heard the term window violation uh, for the first time, I think about six weeks ago. I had no idea what that was. I thought it was something you went to jail for, for being a pervert. You know, <laughs> I, I had no idea what win, window violation was. And it was to do with a picture I had put on, I think it was Facebook. I don't have a Facebook account. I have one where I can just get access to groups. And people were arguing about it and things. And I, I had no idea what they were talking about. So I just I didn't get on with it. Well, so. for beginners, the stereo window is one of the the hardest concepts to get. But as soon as you understand it, it just clicks. And uh, I used to actually have a window, uh, made a frame when I'd give a workshop and explain the stereo window using a frame to show how you are in relation to the edges and uh, what 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 via, what constitutes a window violation. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, David, I just play around with the depth map until it looks right. Well, you're doing it right. I mean, whatever you're doing, it, it looks spot on. And the one, the one picture where you said it was too close at the bottom, no, it looked perfect to me. You know, yes, right. you could have had a little more space, but yeah. just touching the edge perfectly, it's perfectly fine. <laughs> it looked great. Um, yeah, th thanks very much. I'm always open to constructive criticism. It's the only way you learn. <laughs>